In the fourth and final video, we will take a deeper look at how students and teachers access the digital tools available to them and how all this is managed on a district level. In 2012, we began what we realize now was actually two journeys. One was the journey towards one-to-one. -to -one. The second was the journey towards redefining how the district adopted, procured, managed, and used digital resources. It was one thing for a teacher to say, take out your math book and turn to page 36, or take out your science book and turn to page 54. In the digital sphere, however, the meaning of that simple direction completely changes. Students have to deal with websites, usernames, passwords, rostering, and content assignments all before they can ever see the content on page 36 or 54. We realized that we needed to comprehensively rewrite the story of how content was accessed and used in our district. Time has value. Before going one-to-one, -one, we had computers in labs, carts, and classrooms. All computers require a login. Then once you log in, you have to access resources that are all independent of each other. Teachers also have to do creation of courses, classes, and set up student access. They also have to manage changes. Regardless of if you are one-to-one, -one, these are still real issues that every school has to face. Going one-to-one -one changed the way we purchase content we had an increased need for digital access. We needed a consistent way to interact with partners and share data. We also needed a way to reduce district overhead in relation to roster file creation. The district adopted the one roster file format for all roster file creations and made clear to publishers that this was our direction moving forward. 18 plus applications are now using the one roster file format. Before one roster, that was 18 separate roster files being produced that were all different. With the back-end process for providing data set, we realized that we were enabling two distinct online experiences for teachers and students interacting with content. One is an immersive experience where we use the IMS Global Standards to simplify access to rich curated publisher content. The second is a more personalized experience where we use standards again to provide direct access to specific publisher content. While every school may not have one-to-one, -one, every school has access to digital content. Every school has some combinations of devices that they can use. We've used the IMS Global Standards to provide access to the majority of content through the online dashboard, Launchpad, as described in Video 3. We use LTI logins to systems such as PBS Learning Media. We use LTI to provision accounts automatically for users to systems such as the Pearson MathXL and McGraw-Hill Marine Science. This has allowed our teachers and students to simply log into Launchpad, choose the resource they want, and to click. That's it. They automatically get access. Here's a visual example of the simplicity of accessing digital resources using the IMS Global Standards. If a teacher or students wants to access discovery content, they just have to log into Launchpad, click on the discovery icon, and that's it. They're automatically logged into discovery. For the personalized experience, it's important to have a common layer of access for individual students. While Launchpad creates a common layer for overall access, you need an LMS or a centralized way to get a specific piece of content in front of all or a specific group or even one of your students. While enabling the full interaction with publisher content is the traditional way of interacting with digital media online, you can gain even more power directly connecting students to the relevant resource. In the previous example, we showed you accessing discovery learning easily through Launchpad. In this example, we are in our district LMS canvas. A link has been added to the information about Hurricane Irma in discovery learning. When clicked, the students are taken directly to a page that contains the resource instead of just to the Discovery homepage. In this example, we found a video in the district's Learning Object Repository, Safari Montage. The video plays directly on the page itself instead of loading on a separate page away from the other content the teacher may have added for students. We've also enabled this level of content interaction with popular services such as YouTube. If you are going to use YouTube content, it only makes sense to surround it with directions, text, and other media directly related to the lesson from the teacher instead of the other distracting content that YouTube has on its own site. We also work with publishers to provide thin common cartridge version of their content. This allows us to create standalone courses built of individual assets. So if a teacher wants a video or a PDF from a certain chapter, they could just go to that section and enable that content for their students to see. We even gave Canvas the course codes associated with the thin common cartridge content 
which allows them to push the course directly to the dashboard to teachers for easy access in the case of Springboard. In comparing the immersive experience versus the personalized experience, one experience is not necessarily superior over the other. While the personalized experience is a great way for the teacher to directly connect a student to content, the immersive experience can be used as part of an independent learning station or allow students to take a more overall charge of their learning. It depends on the use case to decide which one is better for that scenario.